Festival, which will be held in July in Jamestown, New York. I certainly uh, look back and, you know, feel privileged that uh, I've had an opportunity to do my broadcast from these festivals, and uh, it's a joy that so many wonderful people work so hard, put in tremendous effort, and have the ability to bring the best that maybe this country has to Jamestown, New York. So July, set your calendar, set your dates, and be ready to enjoy it another year. Jim Barry's with us from the uh, Roger Torrey Peterson Institute, Ralph Sanquist. Did you bring your carving tools with you? <laughs> 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 you look naked without them, Ralph. probably got a pocket knife on them. <laughs> and Ruth Lundin is with us from the uh, Roger Torrey Peterson Institute. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Go Jamestown. Ahead. Jamestown Audubon Society. Society. <laughs> okay. Uh, we welcome you all. This, uh, by the way, is a is a, a program that's also being taped by Greg Peterson, who I have many times uh, announced that he's uh, a treasure in Jamestown because he's uh, creating the archives for people of the future to be aware of what went on during our time. And Greg, again, thank you very much. Ralph, uh, you first got in touch with me with a, about doing the shows from there, and I thank you. What is, is there anything special about the seventh year that, looking back to the first year? Well, the, the whole show is special, Jim, because it's, it's the only show that we're aware of where all the artists are working. We not only have 80 artists from the United States and Canada and from all over the country uh, here with their works, but they're working so you can watch them painting and sculpting and so on. And that makes it very interesting. You know, it's not only the cl class of the show, but it's very unique. I'd have to ask the question, where did the original idea come from? I mean, how much optimism did you have that you could pull this off, if I can term it in that way? Well, it was uh, the result of having done many shows throughout the country and trying to analyze what was, what was working and what wasn't working, and then adding to it uh, the, the uh, artist working. So it's, it's like uh, visiting a studio of 80 artists, which most people don't have much, a chance to do otherwise. You felt that your connections over the years, they'd accept your invitation to be in Jamestown for a show? It helped. It helped. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. Yeah. Don't be too modest, Ralph. <laughs> you, uh, know the, you know, Jim, Jim the, Barry, go ahead. the, the show, uh, and Ruth sh sh should, should probably uh, embellish this part a little bit, but as far as the local scene goes, the Jamestown Audubon Society started uh, a nature uh, art show at their facility that was held each fall for years. Mm -hmm. Seven yeah. years, I believe, there, yeah. too. And that uh, was the predecessor to this event. And uh, Ralph, who was the artist, who had been visiting shows and, and uh, going to shows all over the country, saw the connection that what the uh, potential really could be here in our hometown. So he, he's really the the uh, inspiration for the, the show as you see it today. Well, Ruth, you were just mentioned. We have to get to you. And uh, How many years, first of all, have you been associated with the Jamestown Audubon Society? Well, I've been associated. This is the uh, my, my sixth year with the, with the Audubon, and it's been six wonderful years. And one of the first things that I remember, Jim, is, is the meetings about the Nature Art Festival because we were just about to have the first uh, combined Nature Art Festival, and it was a, a huge leap of faith. We did have a very, very successful festival at, at the Audubon, uh, but we'd sort of outgrown uh, the, the location, and so that's where I, I think Ralph and, and Russ Dietrich was also a, a very strong part in, in, in envisioning this po possibility to expand, bring in the Roger Troy Peterson Institute, and the first festivals, of course, then were were at the at the lo two locations plus at the armory, and to think that we could bring so much talent to Jamestown, I think that that was uh, was a, a, a leap of faith. But uh, we've had a wonderful committee from the very start, and with with Ralph's vision, it's it's been a marvelous success. Well, I certainly want to comment because uh, uh, to be there and and meet these people. And Ralph and, and, and your your brochures and your your literature that you put out, 
they're world renowned, let alone just nationally oh, yeah. renowned people. Yes. And for them to come from, I think, Sweetwater, Texas, or what? Right. Or, am I right, Ralph? Well, cl close to close. That. Yeah. Yeah. But for them to come from the distant places and to bring their their uh, you know their projects, their uh, their finished product, and for us to be able to see it, that's that's an amazing piece of logistics to gather all oh, yeah. of that and get yeah. it here. Ralph. I, I think it's it's interesting that. Uh, the world's greatest scratchboard artist does one show a year, and it's the Jamestown show. And also, I think it's important for people to realize that uh, we hold the artists, and four to one, they voted Jamestown show the best show that in the country out of all the shows they do. Let me pause. <laughs> no, that's the nice place to pause because uh, you know we. We, we can hear all kinds of uh, what you might call negative thought yeah. about this community. But yet when you, Russ isn't here at the moment, he will be, but when you see the opportunity that this community's had because of the effort of many people, we bring the Babe Ruth World Series to Jamestown oh, yeah. and they love yeah. it. They saw the hospitality and the uh, personality of the people and their families. And then you tell me that artists of this creative ability consider this the best show on the road right that's amazing we'll be back after this message have to pause for a commercial all right back to the nature art festival scheduled for july in jamestown new york the site that as ralph sanquit said moments ago the artist himself picked as the number one location to uh, have a show and we're very grateful for that um, I want to go back to the first year, and any of you can answer this. Uh, uh, do you remember the attendance figure at the first year, and did it surprise you or did it disappoint you? Uh, which, wh what area did it fall in? Well, uh, the first year was 1999, and it, w and it was a pretty risky thing, you know, because we had not done this before. The two organizations coming together. Traditionally, the show was in October at the Audubon Nature Center. This was going to be in August, and uh, we were pretty worried about it. But we had a really cool group of volunteers. I think at that time there, there was uh, you know, a core of them, let's say 15 or so, that helped plan it. They did all the, all the publicity and marketing work, and they did everything that needed to be done. So when the show started, and it was at three venues, the Audubon Nature Center, the Roger Torrey Peterson Institute, and, and the Jamestown Armory. and. Uh, I think we had about 4,000 people or so, and, and we were elated. It was exciting. It worked out well. I think in the first half hour, we knew that we had nothing to worry about. But until those first people came, we were, we were worried. Yeah, but did you ask yourself the question, what do we do for an encore? <laughs> well, well, we did, uh, and uh, we, we knew we needed more space. And, and like, the, like the armory, well, you know, it wasn't air conditioned. It was packed with people. We knew that we were going to have to get food because people were hungry. We knew that we would have to, you know, get a get a, a shuttle system down where we could get people to all the venues. I mean, we we were doing a shuttle, but we we came up with new ideas for parking and everything else. We we really knew that we had to had to expand to make the show more successful. What was uh, uh, the reaction after the show uh, from the artist Ralph or Ruth, whichever? Well, I th I think that the the best testament to that, Jim, is that. About 90 percent of them return every year. Uh, that that's pretty unusual at a show. If, if you get a 60 percent retention rate, it's very very high. You're batting, you know, that's that's a wonderful batting average. I mean, to think that yeah. the one show, and 90 percent of them agree to come back the next year, and has that continued at that pace? Uh, yes, actually, it, it's maintained that. We've had a waiting list of artists for a long time because there wasn't uh, room for many new artists. It happens this year we have some competition with another show uh, that's taken a few of ours away, but it's also enabled us to bring in some brand new artists some, that have never been here and some fantastic artists. We have some, uh, a group of them actually coming from Canada uh, whose talent is just, just unreal. Uh, we have uh, bronze sculptors, stone sculptors, wood sculptors besides the painters and potters and stained glass people and all that. And among them is, is a lady, Kim Shackley, from Colorado. 
She is a bronze artist, and she will come in with a huge truckload. And uh, in her application, she asked me if the building was large enough to get in one of her large, her largest uh, pieces. So I'm anxious to see that. I haven't seen it. I've shown with her at other shows, but I've I've never seen her large piece. That's an amazing accomplishment. I mean, for that person to do what she's going to do, get a truck yeah. to travel the country, that's about 1,500 miles or better, because I have two children in Denver, Colorado, so I know the distance. I've, I've gone there. But uh, That's amazing. the reputation the show has, but it's also Ralph's influence, because it, Ralph's influence gives the show a lot of credibility because the artists know who he is, and they, they, they like him. I don't know why, but they like <laughs> I think it's the reputation of the show, actually. Now, that may have had some influence early, but, you know, the show has a good reputation around the country, and we get calls from artists just out of the blue, you know, that we haven't contacted yeah. even. So it's the reputation of the show. Well, I want to get... To Can I ask a question, Ralph? Uh, you, I think it begs the question of these artists and the selection process. At some point, you had to, as a committee of one, perhaps, or a committee certainly of a few, had to decide who's coming. Who are you going to invite, and how does that work? Well, uh, we, we try to select the very best. And uh, when there is a vacancy, we go to the uh, waiting list. And this has enabled us to increase the quality of the show all the time instead of having to, you know, if we had a bad reputation, it would be very difficult for us to be getting some of these artists. So it's enabled us to, to keep the the quality of the show and uh, this year is, is no exception and in, a, in addition to the artists this year uh, we have added uh, live music on two stages appropriate music for the show uh, last year we added landscapers to decorate the the uh, arena and that worked out very well so uh, I think this year certainly will be even better than last year if I may get personal here uh, Greg you can join any time by the way uh, I certainly want to find out, uh, you know, why you people are, are doing what you're doing, your love of what you're doing. Ruth, when did it all start with you? In grade school somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I think the, the love of the natural world definitely started in, in, in grade school. Uh, it was something that, that as our, our family, we always went camping. And they say there's a real high correlation, people who go camping and go out of doors and, and, and uh, continue in life to, to really value nature. But uh, really what, what happened to me is uh, I was in, in the business world, I was uh, working in manufacturing, but I said, boy, I would really much rather be working at something that I love. And I said, geez, what do I, I love? I love the out of doors. I said, what do I value? And I value um, the environment, but also kids. I love kids, and I, I'm concerned about children's education. So I put those things together, and I said, what is that? How does that come out? And I said, that sounds like a nature center administrator to me. <laughs> <laughs> and so with no background, I have no science background or education background, I said, boy, this is what I love to do. And people such as Jim Barry uh, uh, recommended to me to, to work on this and do this. And so I came to Jamestown specifically to, to go to work at the, at the Audubon Center and Sanctuary. It's, uh, it's known all over the country uh, as, as a premier nature center, as one with a wonderful programming, and I have to say also with wonderful volunteers. That is so key to this event oh, yeah. uh, and to everything. Uh, Jamestown has has people that are energized, that work and do things at a level that that has the the rest of the United States just in awe, and and that's I'm not uh, really exaggerating on that. I, I know you're not because I often say that when I go to these events where volunteers are involved mm -hmm. in any project in yep. the city, mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't put a price tag right. on on what they what they do. If you had to hire a staff like that, the show would never exist. It would never happen. But you've got right. people who, for the love of the of the event, for the love of the project, for the love of the community, want to be part of it, and we're very fortunate. You know what uh, else? Uh, Jim Barry, of course, you have to answer the same question. Okay. Yeah. Oh, about <laughs> well, nature? Yeah, about nature and, and uh, your, uh, you know, opportunity to finally come yeah. to Jamestown. Well, uh, like Ruth, uh, growing up, uh, I, I had a father, I had one of those fathers, you know, that thought their son, they got to teach him all the guy stuff, so, 
you know, hunting, fishing, camping, canoeing. We would do all this stuff, right? And I don't know that he enjoyed it that much, but he thought he, it was his job to do that with me. But anyway, and then I went off to college there in the late 60s, and uh, you know there was a great consciousness uplifting about the environment, social is issues, everything else, and I just latched right on to the environmental movement in the earliest days, and I was lucky enough to, to then go you know, right into it, right after college, working for the state of Ohio Department of Natural Resources. But anyway, I, I, I just love the outdoors, but especially the education part with young people. And about coming to our town? Yes. Well, this is my, I guess, 33rd year now in the nature education world, but Roger Torrey Peterson, of course, was an icon for naturalists. I mean, not only people that love nature, but also for people in the field, you know, naturalists and people working in, in a, a field biology or ecology, that sort of, sort of thing. And I knew about the Institute. I was at the Cincinnati Nature Center then at that time, and I, knew, I heard the job was open. And uh, I said, man, that would be the, the best place in the world to be, Jamestown, New York, you know, director of the Roger Torrey Peterson Institute. I applied, and I don't know how I got the job, but I did. And I've, I've been here nine years now. Jim, you, Jim, go ahead, Greg. I was going to say, your, your paths crossed with Roger Torrey Peterson. Yeah. Actually meeting him for the first time, yeah. what was your impression? Well, the first time I actually spoke to him, and had a conversation with him rather than seeing him from afar doing a program was actually in his home in Old Lyme, Connecticut. And this was uh, right after I was hired. See, I, I started in January of 96. Well, in October of 95, Roger had had a stroke and he was paralyzed uh, on one side of his body and uh, he just wasn't able to participate in the search committee which had been going on all that time. So I didn't really meet him until after. I started working and I, I got to meet with him three times in Old Lyme and then he died in August, uh, uh, excuse me, in July of 1996, so it was only a little time. But, but I, I was mesmerized by the man, it was amazing. When I, when I first met him, he, you know, he, 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 he's this tall, um, you know, handsome, uh, lanky Swede <laughs> and um, he's just has, uh, I, I of course had seen him from far and things, but I, I was so nervous, it was unbelievable. I, I was, uh, I was afraid I was going to say something stupid, you know, and he's going <laughs> to, he's going to say, what in the heck? You know, I had already been working as a naturalist for, for almost 25 years, but, uh, but I, w I was so afraid to, uh, you know, even say, well, Roger, what kind of birds have you been seeing lately? But believe it or not, the first thing he said was, you know, Jim, uh, I'm glad you're here because you're a, you're a naturalist. You're a real naturalist, and thanks for running this institute. And then everything just smoothed out from there. But it was quite an experience. I, I was just driving to Old Lyme, and just anticipating this for days. I was a nervous wreck. Okay, can I continue that on, Ralph? Yep. You met Roger Torrey Peterson. What was your impression? No, as a matter of fact, I had every time after I got involved in carving and so on, when I wanted to meet him, I was out of town or he, you know, he wasn't here. I never met him. I wanted to badly, you know, but I, I never met him. Well, in your field, what, what does Roger Torrey Peterson mean to the artists? Uh, it, it means everything, actually. Yeah. Uh, I still, you know, I use a a lot of his research book, a lot of his books that he's written and so on for research. I have a pretty good, big library of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did probably, I guess, more than James Audubon did, although more, probably more people oh, than yeah. James Audubon. Oh, yeah. But with the other artists, for instance, Fran Sweet, uh, this, Ralph mentioned him earlier, he's this nationally known scratchboard artist, and this is the only show that he does. He does it for one thing because of Ralph, and the other thing, he was close to Roger and he really loves coming to Roger's hometown. A lot of our artists were acquainted with Roger. Ruth, what's that mean to the Jamestown Audubon Society? Well, the um, uh, Roger Torrey Peterson was, was a real um, a guiding light, I think, for, for the Audubon. Always uh, the original building was the Roger Torrey Peterson Nature Interpretive Building. And so there was always a strong relationship between the Audubon and, and Roger Torrey Peterson, and he was there for, for the uh, dedication, both of the building and of the uh, addition, and uh, um, provided, provided uh, he was, uh, 
just a, a, a great man, and I know that there were several members, many members, who tell me specifically about where they met Roger Tory Peterson and, and what their conversation was. And he was very, very important. Of course, he had passed away before I came to town. Jim, could I interject here a little bit again about the volunteers? Ruth and Jim have mentioned how important they are to us. And one of the sh shows, I mean, for a couple of years, we had to have over 400 volunteers. I think that is truly amazing what Jamestown can do. Uh, but we still need about 300, and there's a pretty good nucleus of it, and we have a, a wonderful chairman of it. But if there are people who want to volunteer, become a part of this sh show, uh, we only ask for three hours of work, and if they would contact either the Roger Troy Peterson Institute or the Jamestown Audubon Society, we'd be happy to add them to our list. We certainly hope you get a response, Ralph, hope on so. that. I can't imagine uh, people not wanting that opportunity to be in the midst of all that talent and that uh, uh, excitement over our town. Very proud to, to, uh, to host these fabulous, yep. talented people. Can We're going to pause on? one more time yep. on the Times of Your Life. Our guest, Jim Barry of the Roger Torrey Peterson Institute, Ralph Sanquist. He's, I wish he brought his tools with him. <laughs> uh, and we have Ruth Lundeen of the Jamestown Audubon Society. Greg Peterson, uh, for the moment, uh, is uh, the voice of the co-host on the Times of Your Life, but he's also, of course, putting this in the archives of uh, film, and uh, future generations will have it forever. We'll be back after this. In this show. The, you know, the volunteers are really running the show, all the committees, marketing, volunteers, uh, the music, yeah. uh, every, every bit of it. And Ralph is the chairman of the event, and he's of course, doing most of the work, but it's volunteers that do everything, really. Should I ask, uh, you know, I'm tempted to say I've had the pleasure of seeing it happen every year, and I've seen the price tags on some of this stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I begin to ask myself questions. Is Jamestown a, a community where there are enough people willing to put out those kind of dollars? I, I, I don't want to, yeah, I, I, I don't want to scare people. Right. I'll be yeah. happy to, to talk to that because we also bring a lot of people in from, from other places. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, so. there are many, but, uh, yeah. but I, I, think I know these artists bring their great work, and, you know, I hate to see them sit there and uh, not, you know, respond. That's what makes it work. I mean, if they weren't selling, they wouldn't be back, and it's important to push that aspect of it. Okay. But I think it's important to realize, <coughs> for the people to realize that we have items from $5 on sure. up. Sure, yeah. Uh, you can buy a print. A, a decent print for thirty-five dollars. Uh, so you know that that there's a wide price range. Yeah, I was happy that I got one for sixty bucks. Yeah. And the other thing is that if a person's going to buy art, whether it's for decorating their home or their office or given to somebody, mm -hmm. an artist from Pittsburgh was fir elected there the first first time, and he was sitting at the banquet. And he happened to be sitting next to Roger Tory Peterson. And Roger asked him what he did and all about his life and so on. And uh, Tom got done telling him about his life, and he says, "And what do you do, Roger?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's 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 uh, a friend of mine called me the day. He said, "Jim, I've got to tell you the story. My daughter now teaches school in Arizona, and she is a teacher. She went to a spring training camp. She's not a baseball nut or a fan or yeah. anything, but." One of her girlfriends or a couple of others said, come on, we're going to go watch the San Francisco Giants. They're, they're training. So they go there, and fortunately, for, it happens that Barry Bonds is right there. Really? Where they just go up, and they're right. And the two other girls or whatever, he said, he said, let's get his autograph. Let's get his autograph, you know. Well, whatever they did. And they said to Mary Beth, Mary Beth, you want his autograph? She said, no, I, I have no reason to get his autograph. <laughs> She says, I'm not a baseball fan. You know, yeah, I don't even right. know who he is, she said. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's astounding, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You think the first reaction was, well, I better get it. No, yeah. she completely yeah. just said, go ahead, you go ahead and get it. <laughs> I don't have to have it. She might regret it yeah, down the road, yeah. you know. You better get all these guys to sign here, right here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> How much time do you think we've taken? Because I've got it. Back to the times of your life. I'm Jim Roselli, along with Greg Peterson. We're expected any moment, maybe Russ Dietrich may stop in and, of course, be part of the co-hosting team here. We're delighted to be at the Peterson office, by the way. Uh, very, I, I, I would like to use this as a studio more often, right? There you go. Ah, uh, we have uh, Ralph Sanquist, uh, Jim Berry, and Ruth Lundin. 
uh, talking about the 7th Nature Art Festival, which is going to be in July. Aren't you all excited over the facility we have here, the Jamestown Savings Bank Ice Arena, which to me seems an ideal hall for an exhibit like this, Ralph? Well, when I was doing shows around the country, other places, and we were at that time in four separate facilities, I was hoping that someday we would have facilities uh, large enough to, to incorporate the show in one location. And now with, with the Ice Arena, we have as beautiful a facility as anybody has. And the nice part about it is, it be, is that we don't have any steps uh, to come to the show anymore. Uh, those who are as old as I am and uh, those who are handicapped and so on uh, don't have any steps to, to navigate. It just works out really well. Uh, you'd have to ask what the reaction of the artists, the people who are coming here, when they see that arena. It, it's impressive. I mean, most all of them, just about all, have been here before. Well, we, we, we do have about uh, 15 new ones, but uh, it is impressive, and we're very proud to have it in Jamestown. You know, Ralph, I didn't ask you to participate in going back to the little the time when you were small and all of a sudden you put something in your hand and carved something and I don't know what the result was at that time that influenced you and, and put you into the life you've had all these years. Well, uh, my hands weren't tiny when I started carving. Actually, I've only been carving 15 years, but uh, I have always worked with art. I can remember copying Disney characters and stuff like that and doing war pictures and things like that. But I did spend probably three hours a day or four hours a day in my uncle's taxidermy shop where I had the opportunity to observe anatomy, bird anatomy, for instance, uh, firsthand. And I, I find myself, you know, visualizing back to that point. But I, I've uh, always worked in art. My first job was an illustrator in the Army. so. Uh, I've always had a relationship to art. Let me ask this question, Ralph, because I've seen your work and people have, and it, it's amazing. It's, uh, you know, uh, top notch. And is there a time when you're carving a piece where there could be a moment that the knife slips or whatever the case may be that the piece won't be finished? Yes, it doesn't happen, you know, too often, but uh, it, it has happened. Uh, we burn wood in the wintertime in the house, and so that <laughs> <laughs> makes it kind of handy. <laughs> How many pieces, Ralph Sanquist, have you actually carved? I really don't have an idea. Probably 400. I don't know. Well, I remember asking you on a broadcast uh, if there was one or two, I, I think, that you uh, have had so many nice offers for. Uh, the price tag was pretty hefty, but you wouldn't part with it. Well, that was the case years ago, Jim, but now I've hauled them around the country for <laughs> several years, and now I'm ready to, I've been ready to sell them. But, uh, yeah, yeah, but I, I wasn't going to sell those two of those, three of those pieces, actually. I've changed my mind. <laughs> well, Ralph, let me ask this, and Jim Barry and Ruth, uh, I said to you earlier that uh, going to that show, as I have each and every year, and looking at the value of those pieces, knowing those artists do what they do, and they're worth every dollar, uh, does the community respond to the value of, of those works? Yeah, it's, I think it's it's wonderful. The the community has, I think, really appreciated the artwork and and the quality of the artwork. The uh, the artists, I mean, there is a range, so that so that there there can be something for everyone. Everyone can go home with something in their hands that they can really value because the quality, whether it's in a small piece or a reproduction or whether uh, a, a, an original or original bronze statue or, or is, is there. Um, so, so part of the interest, of course, is that to me, I, I tell people, this is like going to a museum. This is, this is caliber work that would be a museum caliber that you might think, but, but it's also something that, uh, that then you can purchase. The community has responded. There are many of us that sort of might might uh, look for a couple years or or think really think which kind of a piece do I, is it a is it a carving is it a sculpture what kind of a piece might it be I know last year uh, my parents bought uh, stained glass that was what what they decided that they really wanted but uh, so the variety is there 
the quality is all there and the, and the community I think has appreciated that and people have come from from great distances just particularly to be in the Nature Art Festival and, and to see and purchase. That's right and we do attract people from well outside of our area. Uh, north, uh, eastern Ohio, um, throughout Pennsylvania, mostly central and northwestern Pennsylvania, of course New York State, and uh, through the analysis of the zip codes on the tickets, it looks as though about 25 percent of them come from a come from greater than 35 miles away. So that, that's a pretty significant amount. So so new buyers do come in, and uh, th there's there's something for everybody. I mean, it's not just uh, uh, birds or, or or mammals and 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 things like that, but it's also botanicals, it's landscapes, in all in all types of art. So there the people here in Jamestown as well as the folks from outside of town do do come here to buy and that's pretty exciting of course that's what keeps the artists coming back so we hope so uh, and, and, you, and I think Ralph has said anywhere from five dollars maybe up up to five thousand dollars you know you could buy something I'm sure Ralph you could mention a few probably that people saw the uh, tremendous uh, work and uh, couldn't resist making a purchase even at the highest level of any of the artists that they uh, of their product. Right. I've heard a number of people say they're saving to buy a, a scratch board piece of Fran Sweets. And I would like to remind everybody that uh, Fran Sweet, although this is the only show he does, this is the last show he is doing too. So he will no longer be coming here. So if you want a piece of Fran Sweets, it would be important to get there this year. Is there any particular reason that uh, this will be his last show? Well, everybody gets. Uh, it's not an easy life traveling. Uh, we, we have cut down considerably on ours. We've gone from 18 shows a year to five shows now, or maybe six shows. But uh, we get to a certain age, and it just, uh, you know, that's part of it. The part with Fran, he doesn't have to do shows anymore. He didn't have to do the Jamestown show. But this will be his last one. And, and by the way, he's going to have an exhibition at the Roger Torrey Peterson Institute this summer. That's right. Francis Sweet is one of those master uh, wildlife artists. Uh, he's one of the best, and there's not many of them. And uh, this special relationship he's had with uh, Roger and, and, of course, the Nature Art Festival inspired us to, especially this, this being the last year, is to exhibit his work for the summer. He'll be there teamed up with Eric Berg, who's a great uh, bronze sculptor. Eric is from the Philadelphia area, but he's, he's, he's summers here in Chautauqua County. I think he's been doing it for years. So uh, Eric is going to be here with Francis Sweet. It's going to be a great show this summer. Uh, I want to ask you, Barry, what, what kind of inquiries do you get from the Roger Torrey Peterson Institute? Where do, well, they, where do they come from? Well, we, um, and this is the wonder of the Internet, of course, and with email, we are daily fielding questions of all types. Now, um, oftentimes, it's, it's questions about uh, uh, Roger's observations about birds or localities that he have, has been to. Here's something that just happened, which is really cool. There's only three known films of the Carolina parakeet. This is a bird that went extinct in 1914. One of these films was supposed to be with the person who took it, and nobody in his family can't recall this person's no longer around. The other one, the National Wildlife Federation is supposed to have, but they can't find it. So out of the blue, Cornell called us to see if Roger might have had a copy of that film, and by golly, he did, and we have it. And this is a bird that's extinct, and now it's at Cornell. We shipped it off to them where they're going to digitize it and do some other things. And um, we just have, have we, we, all types of things happen. Even from overseas, we get, we get questions. Well, I certainly want to give Greg an opportunity here. He's filming this for, as we say, the, the great archives that generations will enjoy. Any other thoughts, Greg? Uh, you know, the observation is this is really a community pride opportunity. And as Jim started off, you've got several events. But this sort of brings a lot of this together with the Jamestown Audubon Society, the Roger Torrey Peterson, and Ralph's, and his sincere uh, volunteer efforts. It all congeals over this particular three-day event, and you're all to be commended, first of all, and I, and I think that's just part of the community activity. Um, I think that I've, I've, you haven't really explained probably in great detail what happens to the proceeds of this, whether it's from uh, the admissions, yeah. from the sales, from uh, who's the beneficiary yeah. of this. 
And so maybe that ought to be explained. Rufa. Okay. Yes, uh, we are very uh, uh, fortunate because this, this, uh, the proceeds from this event uh, go to the Roger Torrey Peterson Institute and the Jamestown Audubon Society to help us provide the, the programming that we provide to the, the community. It's a very, very ne necessary support for for uh, the organizations, and it's the admissions. It goes is divided between the two organizations, and also we have wonderful corporate and foundation sponsors that that support us, and also then there's a commission from the artist sales that that do come to the the two organizations. So it helps us turn on the lights, uh, <laughs> do the exhibits. Um, uh, yeah. keep keep the staff, and, and it's a, extremely important in that sense, in addition to providing us with uh, 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 raised awareness. It, it gets the word out and right, to, into the community. It's a PR event for right. us, so for our that, organizations. So that uh, people can learn more about the things that we do the other 363 days of the year. I have to share a, a little story here because it was just the other morning that at the breakfast club, which I attend each morning before I report for duty, just to clear my head, and that, that uh, one of the breakfast clubbers said, guess where I spent uh, a, a day or two? He said, I had to go to Buffalo. And he said, I went to the Georgia O'Keeffe exhibit. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, the New what a wonderful story that turned out to be with this artist. Yeah. And I said, well, give me your thoughts. He said, well, you have to see it in order, in a sense, to appreciate it. Yeah. And, and you're awed by by some of the work. So I'm going to ask you, Ralph, when you see the works of these people, paintings and other things, are you mesmerized in a way? Oh, certainly. I, I sometimes wish that uh, I didn't have my exhibit at the show so I could spend the full time <laughs> there. I think that, you know, people who go to this show, they, they are not only being, you know, their, their eyes being feasted with the art and that, but uh, to watch the artists working on that, and then the beautiful music we're going to be having this year, and then to be able to purchase the art and so on, but then to leave that at the end of the day and realize that all of the money they have contributed is going to two great causes. I think that added, you know, it's an added satisfaction. Before time runs out, obviously, you know what, the, the, uh, the question that I'll throw at each of you is the fact that if there was a piece or a piece of art that you could personally have in your collection, which one would you pick, Ralph? Well, I really don't know. I end up buying some or trading every, every year. So we have a pretty good collection of, of pieces. But uh, I have some favorite artists at, at this show, other than Fran Sweet. Uh, Luke Buck, for instance, he, he is a fantastic uh, uh, landscape artist. Pat Lester, who does the most beautiful uh, vases and uh, uh, lampshades and so on. Uh, I, I would like to end up with some of her work. Uh, Bradley Jackson, his work is, is uh, uh, reminiscent of some of the great great artists of today. Uh, Linda Rawson, I don't think there's another artist in the country that does the big cats as well as she does. She is just absolutely you know, phenomenal at those. and. Uh, I don't have any of her work. I do have some of Luke Bucks, but, uh, and Jack Palou. Jack Palou is a very popular artist. His, his paintings are, are of usually hunting or Indian scenes, uh, but he's always been one of our popular artists. Uh, uh, if you can, Ralph, because I see you have a list there, just give the audience an idea of where these people are coming from. They represent all sections of the country. Exactly. I, I just mentioned Texas as one, but give us some other locations they're traveling from. Uh, the Carolinas, Alabama, uh, Florida, uh, Colorado, uh, Michigan, a lot of them from Indiana, Ohio, New York, Pennsylvania, New England, uh, down the coast. And I think we'll have about eight artists from Canada, most of them from the Toronto area. Jim Barry, I, I hope they have a, a, enough time on their hands for them to personally go to the Roger Torrey Peterson Institute. Now, uh, some yeah. that are new, I mean, well, we know others have been there now. But that's right. What do they? What What's their reaction when they see that institute? Well, 
when people see RTPI for the first time, they're, they're really surprised, they're amazed. It's really, a, 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 as far as architecture goes, this is a landmark building for Western New York. This is just a beautiful, the uh, building's a beautiful setting and, and they're just blown away by it. It's, it's uh, first rate architecture, we've got great exhibits and lots of other things too. Plus there's something else they can do this year for the first time. When they come to the Nature Art Festival, that Art Fest ticket will allow them to go to RTPI, the Audubon Nature Center, and we also have an arrangement with the Lucy Desi Museum and the Jackson Center and the Fenton History Center so they can see our whole community that weekend at really discounted prices. Did we leave out Chautauqua Institution? Well, Chautauqua, <laughs> you know, we, we've, uh, they, they've cooperated with us a lot in the past to try to get the word out to the people on their grounds to come down and, and, and see the organization or to see, see the, the happening, the art festival. But they definitely have helped us in the past. Well, the reason I ask is because you, you had mentioned the other venues yeah. there, and I was just thinking somebody comes to come to this event, but suddenly they're exposed to the fact this is the birthplace of Lucy and what right. a museum we're building in her memory. It's now Roger Torrey Peterson. It's now the Robert Jackson Center. That's it's right. It's now one we're boasting about. Greg Peterson, you know what work he's done in behalf along with Raleigh Kidder and so many other tremendous volunteers. And then we have... Well, you just know, down the road, a great summer colony that offers you the arts. Right. Ruth Lundin, you must sometimes uh, hit yourself in the head wondering, is it all true? This is, this is true because this is a, a wonderful, wonderful community. When I first came here in 1995, uh, found out what is available in the, in the area as, as well as the fact that the, uh, the Audubon is such a, a wonderful facility. Uh, it just, uh, it, when I found out that there was an opportunity to, to work here, I, I was the first one to, to put in my letter because I, I really was always very pleased. But uh, um, yeah, we hope people will also make it out to the Audubon uh, when they come for, for the weekend because uh, we have uh, the exhibits there and the wonderful sanctuary and this is a wonderful natural area too. I don't think we've mentioned the dates. We know it's the month of July. But what are the exact dates? July 16th and 17th, Saturday and Sunday. Well, that's a big weekend. Circle the dates on the calendar. What's the price of admission? Eight dollars. And children the most under most reasonable eight dollars that you can spend thinking of what oh, yeah. you're being exposed to. That's right. And, and Jim, uh, it, it's really important too that to, for the public to realize this is a show for the kids too. Mm -hmm. Uh, children under 12 are free, and it's a wonderful opportunity for them to, to see art. Well, I think uh, you never know the moment, as I call it in a person's life, where that inspiration is coming from. That's right. And it could be some child is saying, I'd like to do that. That's right. That's you can't discount that possibility. Yeah. That's and right. it's wonderful because the artists really Ralph selects them for not just that they're working but they love to talk about their art and some of the uh, most wonderful experiences are, are the interaction between the artists and and people the visitors because they can learn they can ask how they got the inspiration they can ask about technique they can ask uh, it was wonderful I, I did a program just talking about each artist and why they're doing nature art and they have wonderful stories to tell and this is the sort of thing that, that the kids can, can grab a hold of, but us, we all love it. Greg Peterson, you've put on film here something that, as I said before, future generations will see. Uh, when you think of what collection you've made here, of what this community offers, uh, uh, are you, you know, there's no stopping you with your camera and your film here, you know, Greg. Where, where's your next great adventure? I don't know. I continue to document this, uh, the Robert Jackson legacy, so I'm having fun with that. But I, I, not to lose track of what we have here today, and the reality is, and sometimes you have to really step back, what is going on at the Jamestown Savings Bank Ice Arena, what's going on at the Jackson Center, Roger Troy Peterson, Jamestown Audubon, sometimes we lose track of the fact that this is economic development. It it's is. cultural tourism at its finest. Yeah. And for more than just simply in people to come to enjoy the art, but there are an awful lot of folks who come in, they spend nights, spend right. night, many they nights do. here, spend money, leave it in Chautauqua County, go to restaurants, and it has a multiplier effect. 
So this event is much more. When we had the Junior National Ice Skating Championships, uh, they factored in and said that may have had an economic impact in excess of, you know, two and a half million dollars. You know, so these events. Sometimes we live in Jamestown, New York, and we sort of maybe parochial thinking, thinking, well, yeah. just an event. We'll go down. It's sort of like the going to the, the band concert. Nothing against band concerts, but this is a major league event. It's a major league event with major league economic development consequences, sometimes direct, sometimes indirect. The consciousness raising that occurs at right. the Jamestown Audubon, the Roger Torrey Peterson Institute, the fact that Jamestown can pull off a show like this through the du direct uh, excitement of Ralph, uh, that feeds well for everybody else. And it just raises the level of attitude. And so I commend all of you. I think it's just terrific. And uh, again, we play, I tend to play in a few areas, and uh, that's, this is all part of a wonderful web of activity in Chautauqua County. So you know, it can't be lost on it. And nice. I, don't, I don't want to leave out something I should have included in all that list, and that is that uh, our baseball park is one of the finest minor league parks. That's right. And uh, we have produced uh, the, some of the greatest future major leaguers. Randy Johnson is going to pitch for the Yankees this year, and he pitched at the stadium here. Yep. And there are many others. It's amazing what the Babe Ruth World Series has brought to our community. And I remember specifically one kid in the Babe Ruth World Series did make the major leagues. Uh, so the people ought to be aware of that. Oh, yeah, great uh, facilities here. For a community of our size, when you stop and think That's of right. all that we've done. And Ralph, again, uh, I thank you for this opportunity. And uh, I'm sure everybody thanks you because it was your uh, energy, I'm sure, your, your vision, and uh, the wonderful uh, connections you've had with the great artists. Uh, we're delighted that the seventh year is on its way, and we hope it's a bigger success than ever. Well, it, perhaps the idea was mine. I've, I've pushed it pretty hard, but you've had some really good people and uh, through the years working on it, and uh, Jim and Ruth are having to do too much work, actually, into it. I had hoped that they wouldn't have to work so hard into the thing, but they're great supporters. Thank you.